break or I'ma have a flashback Digging through the dresser like fuck it where my mask at The mash back with the banger and damage shit And say fuck everything I learned in anger management Hop back on some east side banning shit And push a nigga's top back when I let the cannon spit Start planning shit, premeditation I'm in love with the streets again, rededication Say what's cracking YouTube? It's your boy 16 to life and I'm back like I'm on a pro violation. You're down. Now for those of y'all that's new to my page, in 1994 I got arrested. I was eventually sentenced to 16 years plus a life sentence. I ended up doing 24 years straight in the California prison system. Uh, during that time I accumulated some good stories for y'all. In the event you happen to like this story, then please be sure to hit that like button. Uh, also, be sure to leave a comment, hit that notification bell, that way anytime I drop a story, you will be notified ASAP Rocky, and you can hop on it whenever you're ready. Um, also, man, I'll be rapping. I definitely get busy on the mic. You'll definitely be surprised. Uh, I just dropped a video not too long ago called Go From Here. I dropped another one called Never Gave Me Therapy. Uh, that's on all the major streaming sites, Spotify, iTunes. Apple Music, so definitely be sure to uh, check that out. You can also type in 16 to Life Music and check out a lot of my songs that I got on there. Uh, Tax Time, um, Ride With Me, By My Side, Never Tell. I got a bunch of songs on there. I also get a lot of uh, requests about the intro song to this right here that you hear at the beginning of my video sometimes. The name of that song is Relapse, and there's also an audio version on my YouTube page as well. So definitely be sure to tune in, uh, tap in and check that stuff out. And uh, if you like hip hop, like I say, you're definitely going to be impressed. Now, with all that being said, let's hop into this story. This particular story right here takes place actually uh, in, the, in Riverside County around 1995. By that time, I'd already been sentenced to nine years plus life for an attempted murder and a great bodily injury. Uh, I was... I still had a remaining murder case that I was fighting. Um, so um, Riverside County, they have a few different jails that make up the Riverside County jail system. Uh, at one point in time, I was sent out to a jail called Southwest and I stayed out there seven or eight months. And then once I started going to trial in the city of Riverside, they brought me back. And uh, I was going to trial from, you know, of course, Riverside because it was closer. Uh, when I came back, they asked me where I want to be housed at. Uh, I told them to send me to 3A, which is a, uh, was an all-black crypt tank. Uh, at that particular time, the prosecutor had, it was somebody else who was in jail, and um, they wanted me and him to be kept away because they thought we had uh, possibly done some crimes together. So they wouldn't put me, they wouldn't put me, to, uh, they wouldn't put me in 3A. Now, 3A has um, a bunch of different, like when you come to 3A, it's a, um, a guard in the, uh, it's like he's in a little, he's like in a little cubicle. And then there's three different, um, three different sections, three different, basically you would call them, I guess, pods that they have people in. 3A1 was the crypt tank. Um, 3A2 was the all white tank, like maybe the woods, you know, people who may have had, you know, um, racial ties, Nazis, Aryan brothers. And 3A3 was um, all Hispanics, the Serenios. Now, on the other side, they had 3B. 3B was a general population, 3B1. 3B2 was uh, the bloods and general population. So they, that's where they end up sending me to 3B. So I had been in there maybe about, maybe about a month or two. And now the, on this particular day, uh, they had released us. We were out in the day room. You know, I believe I had went to the vending machine or something like that. And I'm coming back from the vending machine and something happened to catch my eye in a cell. I happen to look up in the cell and I see this white dude. He's up in there drawing. But also he's got on this big old white hat. I, I assume he made it out of paper, a newspaper, but he's got it rolled up and fashioned to where it looks like a hat that maybe the Grand Wizard from the Ku Klux Klan would wear. So also he didn't took some type of white paper that he's put around the hat. So now the hat is all white. He's also took his white sheet off his bed and he's got the white sheet wrapped around him. So basically he looks like he's in some Ku Klux Klan attire. And he, like I said, he's sitting at his desk and he's, he's drawing or writing. So I see this. I'm like, oh, this dude is tripping. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I go to the table where 
It's the blacks at the table. They sit and play in cards. Now, it happened to be this dude. His name was Rock. He was about of L.A. somewhere. Uh, older cat. You could tell he had been to the pen. You know, we, we was talking and stuff. We had got kind of acquainted and cool. There happened to be another old man at the table we called Pops. And I believe it was a younger dude. I can't remember his name. I believe he was from Mead Valley Gangsters. So anyway, I go to the table. I tell him what I just saw. I said, hey, man, you know, this dude sitting up in there with just like Ku Klux Klan type stuff. I'm just to go bust him up right now. Now, the old man pops when he hear me say that. He said, oh, hell no, chill. You about to start a whole bunch of racial shit. Don't do nothing like that. Just drop a kite on his ass. I said, no, man, I ain't just to do nothing like that, man. I'm just to go get this dude. So Rock's like, what a dude that? I said, man, the dude is sitting in his cell right here. I said, listen, Rock, I just need you to come, you know, either post up by the door or just lightweight post up by the door. Just be on point. You know what I'm saying? He like, don't even trip. I got you. So I believe the young dude from Mead Valley, he also came with him. And once again, the old man piped up. He like, oh, come on now, chill, chill, please. You about to start a whole bunch of racial shit, chill. I just, I'm not, I'm not cool with this shit. I said, hey, Pops, man, listen, I'm just to go get this dude. So, you know, Pops is steady telling me, no, I'll kick back, all that old type of stuff, you know. So I walk over there to a cell. Like I say, he's in there writing or drawing, and he's got the cell door open. So he's, he's got it cracked. So I just opened the door a little bit more and slid up in there. He looked up and saw me. He said, hey, man, what the fuck are you doing? <clears throat> you know, of course, because I'm not, you know, he's white and I'm not, a, I'm not assigned to that cell. But the bad part about Riverside County was they didn't care. You know, they would put a Mexican with a white, a, a Mexican with a black, a black with a white or whatever, whatever, you know. But at that particular time, of course, I wasn't assigned to that cell. So that's why he was tripping. So when he, but he's still sitting down when he says that. So then when I walk up in him, I said, hey, man, what's up with this stupid ass hat you got on? I slapped the hat. Bam. When I slapped the hat, he stood up. He said, what are you doing, fucker? And the, the, uh, the pen that he was writing with, he threw it at me. He threw it at me and hit me in the chest. When he hit me in the chest, I, I just stepped back. I give him a cold three piece. Bing, bing, bing with the hook. Soon as I hit him, he fold up. And he goes straight to the field position. I say, yeah, you stupid motherfucker. You want to be on some racist shit or whatever I said. Then I played David Beckham on his motherfucking ass and I kicked him hard as I could in the back. Bam, you know. I said, yeah, you stupid motherfucker. You know, I'm talking stuff, you know. So then I finally, I come up out of there. Now, I would say maybe about a minute or two later, he come up out of there. Now, when he come up out of there, of course, he goes straight to the other white dudes up in there. So they start having a little powwow. They over there talking, you know. He turn around a time or two and point in my direction. Now, eventually, it was a, a white dude up in there. He, he stepped maybe, he gets like maybe about four or five feet with us. And he calls Rock. Him and Rock had had some type of rapport, I guess. So uh, Rock goes over there. Now, they talking for a few minutes and stuff. Now, by this time, we didn't all, all the blacks, of course, we didn't all stood up. We on point now. The, the, the whites, it might have been, I would say, maybe about maybe about 10 to 12 of them up in there, you know. And the brothers, we had as many or more, you know what I'm saying. So him and Rock, they over there talking for a little while. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then, you know, Rock shaking his head like, yeah, yeah. So Rock eventually, he come back over there. He say, hey, chill, you know, uh, of course they don't like what you did. And uh, they just want y'all to go up in there again and, and have a, uh, a head up fight. Dude is talking about you came up in there and punched him when he wasn't ready. I said, they don't even trip, you know, but they had already told him, you know, that basically wearing that little outfit would be problematic. You know what I'm saying? But he was one of them dudes, either dumb or thought he was tough. He didn't care. You know what I'm saying? So I said, like I say, man, no problem. Don't even trip. So this time I walked back over there. Now a couple of more dudes come over there too. you know, uh, rock the uh, dude from Mee Valley and one or two. One or two more brothers who were up in there happened to come up over there. Now, by this time, too, Pops and went, Pops and got on and went up in the cell and closed the door. He don't, Pops don't want no more of this bullshit or whatever he thinks is about to transpire. <clears throat> so, when I'm walking over there, the dude, of course, by this time, he didn't took all that silly stuff that he had off. He didn't took that stuff off. Now, he goes, he goes up in his cell. Now, his cell happened to be kind of big, you know what I'm saying? So, when I, when I go up in there, he's already up in there. He's prepared. He's standing at the back of the cell as far back as he can get uh so now when i go in there, i go in there ready i push up in there when i come up in there you can already see it you know what i'm saying that that three piece that i hit him with is still fresh on his mind he really don't want no problems but of course he got to put on this this tough guy facade 
for, you know, for the white dudes and stuff. So now when I come up in there, he throw just a wild haymaker at me. I can tell this dude he can't fight a lick, you know what I'm saying? So when he when he throw when he throw the wild haymaker, I just step back, bam, bam, I'm on him again. He immediately fold up again. But this time when he, he ball up, he don't go to the ground. He just balls up. So now I'm just on him. Boom, boom. I'm punching him and socking him. Now, this time, of course, you know, when something like this is going on, um, a little racial pride becomes involved. And by me in there blending him, I'm putting him in the cold blender, mixing him. Some of the white dudes starts yelling, get him, man. Get him, get him, man. Get him. But uh, only thing, you know, he's the only one getting got. You know what I'm saying? He ain't. At this point in time, this dude has even, he's continued to even try to fight. So I'm basically just on there, on hammering him. I'm hammering him. So now I snatch him and get him in a headlock and I'm just boom, boom. Now I guess at this point in time or somewhere around there, the COs, I mean not the COs, well the, the deputies or whoever, the guards, they happen to look out their little cubicle that they're in and they see all these people gathered by this cell and they looking in so they automatically, automatically can tell it's a fight or something going on. So then they come over the loudspeaker, lock it up, lock it up, you guys, lock it up, lock it up. So now we still in the cell, we still in the cell fight. So now, of course, when I hear this, I'm assuming that the police is coming now. So then I slam him to the ground. I hop on top of him. Now I'm just busting him up. He didn't kind of like turned his back. His head is almost facing the wall. And I'm basically just on him. You know, I'm just dogging him. Now, the, so the, the, uh, the guards, they finally run up in there and stuff. They come up in there, get down, get down, get off him, get off him. They tell us all that stuff. I just get down. I lay down. They don't spray us. They don't mace us or nothing like that. They pick us up, you know, pick, pick me up, pick him up, handcuff us, walk us up out of there. You know what I'm saying? So at that point in time, like I say, I was young. I hadn't been to the prison yet. You know, I didn't really know that you couldn't just go put your hands on somebody else or it could turn into a potential um, you know, riot, melee, whatever, you know what I'm saying? But like I say, I, at that time I was young and I didn't care. Plus this dude is running around here. You know, he had to know that the little outfit that he had on was going to, um, infuriate and upset people who was black. So if he didn't care, I, you know, I, I felt I didn't care, you know what I'm saying? But that's how that situation turned out right there. You know, there was never no more, um, repercussions. Matter of fact, they end up taking me downstairs. Uh, I spent the night downstairs. They end up moving me. And this time they did move me. When they moved me, they moved me to 3A. Uh, when I get to 3A, I found out the dude that they was concerned with keeping me away with, he had got into a fight and broke his hand. And so he was up in the hospital. And that's how I got up in there. Uh, so now I'm in there maybe about, I would say I'm in there maybe a couple weeks or so. Now, there, there was this dude up in there. His name was Peanut. Now, that was his real name. Peanut was from Riverside. He was from uh, Hillside, Riverside. He had a brother by the name of Fresh. And I had met Fresh when I was at the other prison, uh, the other jail in Riverside, in Southwest, uh, in Temecula, or, or Mary Air, where wherever it was. And um, that's where they had me, and I had, met, I had bumped into his brother Fresh. Now, uh, besides gang fights, I think one of the reasons a lot of fights break out in prison or in jail is behind gambling. You know, you have a lot of people who like to gamble, but when they lose, they get upset. You know, nobody likes to lose their money, but if you don't know how to lose and, uh, accept a loss, then you shouldn't gamble, you know? So anyway, it was another dude in there by the name of Mario. Mario was from Riverside also. Mario was probably, uh, 21, 22 both these dudes were relatively big. Uh, Peanut probably had to be about 6'1", 6'2", probably 215, 220, you know, kind of big, kind of out of shape. Mario was also, you know, looked like he was a, uh ex-football player who had got a little heavy too. So now these dudes, is one day these dudes start playing cards, Mario and Peanut. Now, like I said, in the Riverside County Jail, we happen to have vending machines in there. You could go to one of these vending machines, people would put money on your books, you would run your card through there and you could get, you know, they had one, they had a separate soda machine. They also had um, hygiene in the vending machine, soap, deodorant, razors, soups, coffee, you know, um, things of that nature. And so these dudes were over there playing cards. Now, uh, Peanut happened to lose. So when he lose, Mario said, hey, man, OK, can I get paid? Can I get a snicker or something? Whatever. Mario wanted something about in the vending machine. Peanut tell him, yeah, man, I'm going to pay you but can I get action at my money back? Mario said, yeah, man, I'm going to give you action at, at your money back, but I want something about the machine. 
You know, Peanut is telling him, okay, well, man, yeah, man, I'm going to pay you, man, but I want to actually have my money back. <coughs> Excuse me. But technically speaking, when you gambling, whatever you guys is gambling for, when you lose, the money is no longer yours. So if that man wanted something out of the machine, he was supposed to pay the man. So they go back and forth like this for a while, you know what I'm saying? A couple of minutes, you know. Mario say, hey, man, I want something. Peanut say, I'm going to pay you, but I need action to have my money back. So at some point in time, Mario say, man, fuck it. I'm through gambling now. I don't, don't want to gamble no more, man. Now, since you don't want to uh, pay me right now, we through. You know, I want my money right now. So now can I get paid or not? So when he say that, Peanut like, yeah, man, I'm going to pay you, man, whatever, whatever. So Peanut stand up and start walking towards the machine. So Mario stand up and Mario was following like, yeah, man, you know, you on some bullshit. When you lose, it's my money. Peanut say, man, I said I'm going to pay you. And he turn around and just bam, he fire on Mario. They go to squabbing right there. Bing, bing, boop, bop, bop. It's a good old squab. Like I say, both these dudes is big. You know what I'm saying? So now they fighting in the day room right in front of the cubicle where the, uh, the CEO or the deputy can see. So when he look out and recognize they fighting, he come over to intercom. Lock up, lock up, get down, get down, lock up, lock up. So everybody that's not involved in the fight, like I say, now I'm in the black tank, uh, all black tank. Everybody else just start going to their cell. Just so happened, I'm in cell number two, right in front of the vending machine and stuff. So now, so we go up in cell, we turn around. By this time, they still fighting, but now they chest to chest. They wrestling. Mario, I never forget this move. Mario grabbed Peanut by, with both hands at the small of his back and just squeezed. He squeezed and... and um. Peanut just fell over and folded like it just broke him down. Boom. When he fall on the ground, Mario get on top of him and give him one of them old school, you know what I'm saying? Big brother, little brother uh, ass whoopers. He started hitting me. You bet not never put your hands on me. He just punched me. Now, by this time, the, uh, the, they run up in there, the deputies of the sheriffs or whatever. They telling them stop fighting them. But of course, they won't stop fighting. So they start spraying them. They macing them. Psh! They hitting them with the mace or the pepper spray or whatever it was. Now, when they start doing that, now they both stop and they get up. They both get up and they turning away. Mario was turning away, but Peanut won't stop fighting. So Peanut, you know, he got his eyes closed. And like I say, all oh, this is right in front of my cell. So I got a great view. Mario turned his back and started heading towards the vending machine to get away from the mace. Peanut is following him now. Just kind of like swinging like wild punches. He's swinging wild punches. So Mario is, is facing this way. Mario turn around with the left hand and just swing, just turn around and just throw a wild haymaker. Just so happened, the punch happened to connect right on the side of his head. Now, I'm in the cell. My celly is a dude by the name of uh, Russ. Russ was from Compton. That was his real name. Uh, soon it's, it's, it's like soon as he hit him, a big old giant knot hopped up on his head. Me and him both said, ooh. Now, the knot was so big. The knot is what one of my partners who I met later on in jail by the name of Ed, he ended up passing away. May he rest in peace. Ed would call that a may not. And the reason he would call that a may not because that motherfucker was so big, it might go down, it might not. Or excuse me, I said that wrong. It may go down, it may not. But anyway, y'all get what I'm trying to say, man. So uh, uh, the, the police end up handcuffing them dudes and, uh, you know, took them up out of there. I believe they may have brought, brought Mario back. You know, later on, I end up bumping into uh, into Peanut at a couple other pins, you know. But the majority of the uh, time that I seen fights in prison outside of gang banging, they was either behind drugs or gambling. And like I said, you have a lot of dudes who like to indulge in gambling, but they don't know how to lose their money and keep their feelings in check. So that was one of the things that I learned to be very problematic. And for the most part, it was something that I shied away from. I may gamble from time to time, but I had to know the dude and I had to know his temperament real well, you know, because a lot of dudes, even when you start playing chess or something for fun, when they start losing, the first thing they holler is, let's gamble. You don't want to gamble. You don't want to gamble. And most of the time, that's a situation that's going to end up in um, something that's possibly going to lead to a fight, you know, so because a lot of people don't like to lose their money. Like I say, nobody likes to lose. But when you lose, you have to know how to lose and keep your feelings in check. But uh, anyway. I hit y'all with two for one today. I hope y'all enjoyed them stories. Y'all already know what it is, man. It's your boy 16 to life. Resume normal program.